Okay. She is, whoops. <laughs> she is um, nursing right now, so we are in a cluster feeding stage, which we have been for the last couple of days, actually. But, um, so if you see me cringe, it's because she keeps popping off of me and then relatching, and it hurts really bad. So, um, but I wanted to do my labor and delivery story um, because it was absolutely amazing and I could not have asked for anything better. Um, so, I was 40 weeks and 3 days when they induced me and I didn't want to wait any longer which I could have and that was totally it was totally the doctor's decision and I just agreed with him he said that you know he was on call that day and that uh, we could go ahead and induce me then so that's just what we decided to do and some I have heard horror stories about being induced and other times I've heard that it was great so it was really hit or miss but I just went ahead and went with it and honestly it worked out for the best for us I cannot imagine having to have labored at home and then had to drive almost an hour to get to the hospital because we live so far out from it so it actually worked out that I was being induced because that morning I woke up and felt absolutely fine she never dropped um, like in most pregnancies, I feel like, you know, the baby drops right when they're getting ready. But she never dropped. She stayed, like, right in my rib cage. So who knows how long it actually would have been if we had waited until I had labored on my own instead of inducing me. So anyway, we were supposed to be at the hospital at 9 that morning on Tuesday, September 25th. So we get to the hospital around 8.30 and they went ahead and got me in a room which I thought, you know, we could get the Pitocin started by like 10. That's what I was hoping for anyway. But for some reason, they could not find an IV pole. Like it's a hospital. And apparently they were short some or something. I don't know. But anyway. So they actually didn't get my Pitocin started until 12.15 that afternoon. So in the meantime, while we're waiting, uh, me and Michael played Phase 10, which we have been obsessed with lately, and I totally whooped his butt. And then we just listened to music because I had a speaker. I had a Bluetooth speaker with me, and we just listened to music in the room. And once you're admitted, they don't let you eat anything except for ice chips, so I was munching on some ice. So they started my Pitocin at 12.15 and I was fine for a little while and then around 2 o'clock probably I started feeling contractions. Uh, they weren't very bad and the doctor said, you know, do you want to do pain meds or do you want to go ahead and do your epidural? I was only at 3 centimeters at this point. so. The contractions weren't very strong. They were tolerable. And so I just said, you know, I might do pain meds first, but I'm going to wait and not do them right now. Um, but, I, you know, I just said I would let her know whenever I wanted to do them. And then she was in the room asking me if I wanted the pain meds or the epidural, and my water broke on its own. They didn't have to break it. Um, so once it broke... I immediately, I mean within five minutes, started feeling harder contractions. And, which they say if you're induced that your contractions are much stronger. I don't know if that's actually true because I can't compare it. But, within five minutes they were so strong. This was about, probably about 2.30. And so... Yeah, probably about 2.30, 2.45. So they started becoming really, really strong. And I told her, I was like, all right, yeah, I want pain meds. And then 
she said she was going to come back with the pain meds. I was still at three centimeters. She came back and my contractions were so bad. I never experienced, like, you know, you start with like, oh, they're like 15 minutes apart, then they're 10 minutes apart, then they're five minutes apart. Mine were never more than two minutes apart and I did not have time to breathe in between my contractions. Like, my body was so tense, I couldn't relax it. And the, girls, I know you know what this feels like and I'm just gonna explain it to you raw, like this is how a contraction feels. It's like extreme on level 100 period cramps when you have to go to the bathroom so bad but you can't that is literally the best way for me to describe it and it is the worst pain I have ever felt and I feel like I mean I don't want to say that I, I would be able to tolerate it if they had started out at like 15 minutes apart but at least I would have had time to breathe in between like I I could not relax in between because then they started getting a minute and a half to a minute apart and I, I was screaming thankfully my mom was in there and Michael was in there which I'm so thankful that I had packed in my hospital bag the back massage roller because he was rolling it over my lower back because my contractions were actually more in my lower back um, than they were like in my stomach I guess but anyway he was rolling it over my back and that seemed to help and I was squeezing his hand I was screaming and crying and sweating profusely and um, it, I got so hot I was dripping in sweat and I got so nauseous I started throwing up I guess because the pain was so bad it was honestly the worst pain I've ever felt and I I, I mean I, you know I couldn't stop in between to like you know take a breath and regain my I couldn't even breathe through it it hurt so bad like and then I didn't have time in between the contractions to breathe so it was honestly the worst pain I have ever felt like when when moms say that contractions are, are the worst pain you've ever felt. It is the worst pain you have ever felt. So once those started to get really, really bad, I was like, all right, I'm just going to go ahead and get the epidural. I had planned ahead of time that I, I knew I was going to get an epidural because I don't do well with pain to begin with. And then after experiencing that, I was like, there is no way I can, I, I had no idea at that point, I was still at three centimeters, so I was like, if I have to make it to 10 centimeters, there is no way I can tolerate this with them being this close together and me throwing up so much and everything. So I told the nurse to go ahead and give me the epidural. Well, she said, okay, I have to page the anesthesiologist. So I had to wait like 30 to 45 minutes for him to actually get to my room, and then he had to set everything up. And he came in, which I know he has to say, you know, like, do you know what I'm here for? And, you know, this is what I'm going to do. But he was trying to talk to me. And I'm like, I cannot talk to you through these contractions. They are ridiculous. And then I had planned to, like, you know, have a, I don't want to say a chill labor, but I mean, like, have enough time in between to get up and shower and, and be in the hot water. Or I wanted to be be able to bounce on, like, a yoga ball or something just to, like, kind of breathe through the contractions. No, I had no time for that. So once he came in, he kept trying to talk to me. And then they, I think this is the doctor's or anesthesiologist's preference, but he wanted everything sterile. So he made Michael leave for about 30 minutes while I was getting my epidural done. So it was only me and a f I think there were two or three nurses in there and then him. So he was explaining everything he was gonna do and then the nurse had to help me sit up and sit on the edge of the bed. And everybody says that an epidural is like really, really painful. And I'm not sure if it was because compared to the contractions, I felt like nothing when he put the, the numbing medicine or whatever in. But the way the nurse described it to me was that it, it's gonna feel like a bee sting and then you basically feel like like venom is being put into you and then that's pretty much it and then it goes numb and then they actually put the medication in so I it literally felt like a bee sting in my lower back and then it was quick and over with and then he said well it's gonna take 20 to 25 minutes for it to kick in and I'm already like I felt like I was dying but thankfully the nurse 
was so helpful and she was holding on to me you know while I was getting the epidural and she was telling me everything that was gonna happen what it was gonna feel like and then she said um, you know she helped me breathe through the contractions and that was really helpful because before I felt like I couldn't breathe at all but she really talked me down and really relaxed me to where I was breathing through them because I couldn't move during the epidural while he put it in so she was really helpful and then once I laid down I could just feel like my legs starting to tingle a little bit and I was like okay like I started to feel the contractions I don't want to say slowing down but they were calming down so they weren't as intense and I could you know breathe through them and breathe in between them and then once the epidural kicked in I could not feel a thing like I could I tried to move my legs I tried to wiggle my toes like I could not feel anything and honestly when Michael came back in oh, okay let me say this first so I was at three centimeters and then the anesthesiologist came in put my epidural in the nurse comes back in right after they put the epidural in and she was like I'm just gonna check you real quick and see how far you've progressed I was already at 10 centimeters and so she was like, oh, you can call your husband and tell him to come back in here because you're at 10 centimeters. And I was like, I was like, are you joking? I was like, you're lying. And the doctor looked at me and he was like, that'd be a really cruel joke if I was joking. And I was like, I can't believe I'm right at 10 centimeters. Like, it happened so fast. So I called Michael and he was in the waiting room with my, I don't think my dad was there yet, but my mom was there, my sister was there, my mother-in-law was there, and then... We had some friends there waiting already and I called Michael and I was like oh I'm at 10 centimeters you can come back and he was like what so he came back to the room and the nurse just said um, you know you feel fine and you're already at 10 centimeters so we're just gonna wait for about an hour to let her drop because she still hadn't dropped much and so she said we're just gonna wait for her to drop a little bit and then we'll start pushing in like an hour so I really only had to deal with the extreme intense contractions for about an hour so it wasn't I don't want to say it wasn't that bad because honestly it was the worst experience of my life but like I'm, I'm really not being dramatic about that it was absolutely horrible but at least I only had to do it for an hour and then when Michael came back in after I had gotten the epidural I was talking to him and I was like, hey, you know, yeah, we're at 10 centimeters. We're just waiting an hour, you know, and then I'm going to start pushing. And he was, he looked at the nurse and he said, did she get pain meds too? And I was, and she said, no, no, she just got the epidural. So, she, you know, she can't feel it, anything. And he was like, why does she seem like she's so loopy? <laughs> but honestly, and the nurse, the way she described it, she said she's euphoric. And honestly, that was like the perfect word for it because going through that much pain with those contractions with no break I mean I instantly went from a hundred down to zero like I felt nothing and I've never felt so relaxed in my life that I literally I felt like I was on like heavy drugs I guess because I was so relaxed I didn't feel anything I mean most people say that like once they get the epidural, then they'll feel um, the contractions, but they're really, really mild, or they'll just feel like, you know, pressure when the baby drops something. I didn't feel anything. So the doctor came back in. Well, actually, the nurse came in, and she was like, let's just do, like, a couple practice pushes, and, you know, then we'll just see how, see how you do. This is your first delivery, so, you know, most first-time parents it takes an hour two hours whatever to push so she was like let's just get a couple practice pushes in so I'm excuse my language but I just half-assed it and was like all right here's some practice ones just to see how we do and she was like you're like a pro at this and oh so she was like let me call the doctor and see what he wants to do so she called the doctor and he was like go ahead and start pushing that's fine because he still expected it to be like an hour so I started pushing and which I 
I mean, I didn't feel any of the contractions, so they had to tell me when I was about to have a contraction. <laughs> and they had to tell me when to push, because she was like, all right, just push when you feel any pressure. I didn't feel anything. Um, there were also two um, students, like nursing students in there, that were in their clinicals, and they had asked me if it was okay if they would be in there. And I was like, yeah, I don't care. Like, honestly, it was the most chill experience other than the horrible contractions it was the most chill experience like I've ever been in like I had music playing the whole time the nurses were just like talking to me and like the the students in their clinicals we just like talked and you know I asked them where they went to school and if they liked it and it was the first time um, I think one of the students had seen a c-section but they had never seen um, a vaginal delivery so they were really excited to see it and it was like super chill so they were in there standing in the corner and the nurse had to tell me to stop pushing because the doctor wasn't in there yet and she was like oh my gosh you have to stop so once the doctor came in there I went through four contractions and each contraction you push two or three times. I went through four contractions and she was there. So at 4.50, I started pushing and at 5.03, she was born. It was the fastest, smoothest, most amazing experience I have ever been through. It was so easy. It was not painful at all to me. I mean, obviously, because I couldn't feel anything, which was great. But I, I cannot, I honestly cannot imagine having to feel that after just feeling those contractions and how horrible of a pain it was. I give 100% major props to moms who can do it naturally. I went in there knowing that I couldn't do it naturally, but I honestly cannot imagine. And I also think it is a doctor's preference to do an episiotomy, to like cut if you tear, because I've read that a lot of doctors say that you, if you tear on your own, you heal uh, much faster and better than if they cut you. But, so I actually heard that they don't do that as often anymore, but my doctor is older I guess so he's been used to doing it so he did have to cut me because I had second degree tears um, so he cut me and stitched me up but I honestly felt none of it so it was really smooth uh, Michael cut her umbilical cord and um, helped hand her to me and I mean him and the doctor the doctor that delivered Emma is the doctor that delivered Michael 20 almost 26 years ago so Michael and the doctor just <laughs> sat there and talked through the delivery like it was super smooth super chill uh, I put on my Facebook page today that I had an all-out 90s playlist playing during it and she was born to the song Pony by Genuine and the nurses thought it was the funniest thing in the entire world they're like oh my gosh I have to tell everybody this because this is so funny but it was on shuffle and that was just a song that was playing when she came out so you know so anyway um, they put her immediately put her on my chest and did some skin to skin for a minute and then they went ahead and took her weight and head circumference I don't remember what else they do anyway they did all that and Michael got to help with that and then they put her back on me to do immediate um, breastfeeding to see that she would latch and uh, we did skin to skin and then the doctor stitched me up which I didn't feel and then once once we cleaned everything up the nurses helped me change out of the hospital gown into the gown that I brought with me and then they cleaned everything up and they let visitors come in and they said as many visitors as we wanted to could come in so my I want to say my mom and my sister came in first I think my mom and my sister did and then my mother-in-law came in and then we had friends to come in and see her you know they didn't stay long because we were still in labor and delivery room and then they took me upstairs and admitted me to an actual room. I'm not sure if they always do this, but they kept my Pitocin drip, like in my IV. 
they kept the Pitocin dripping until almost midnight that night. They finished the bag because it makes you your uterus, uterus contract. And so... What is it? Are you waking up? And so they want your uterus to contract back down after you have the baby. Um, and make sure, like, they'll come and push on your stomach every, I think they came every 30 minutes to an hour and pushed on my stomach and made sure that um, I wasn't blood clotting. And so they kept my Pitocin drip on until about midnight, until I finished that bag. And then, um, that was pretty much it. Once we, once we got up to the room, my sister brought me Chick-fil-A and it was like the best meal ever. I totally smashed on it. And they still had to come in, you know, every hour to check on me. And they, the epidural wore off after about an hour after we got up to the room. So she was born at 5.03. I think we were upstairs by about 7 into a regular room. And then probably about 7.30, 8 o'clock, it had worn off. Our, my epidural had worn off. So I was starting to feel the pain from the stitches. So they gave me ibuprofen at first, uh, 800 milligram, milligram ibuprofen. And then the nurse came in and said, how did that ibuprofen do? And I said, I don't feel any different. Like it didn't help me at all. So she was like, huh, that's weird. So she, she left and she came back and she said, I did not realize that you had so many stitches and that he had cut you. She was like, we should have given you something way stronger than ibuprofen. So they ended up switching me between ibuprofen and Tylenol every four hours or something. Um, which it kind of helped, but, you know, it wasn't enough. <laughs> but um, they had to come and help me get up anytime I needed to get up and go to the bathroom because... Um, at least the first two times they have to come in and help you because of the epidural just in case it didn't wear off and my legs decided to give in <laughs> but um, they didn't everything was fine I got up and walked just fine other than being really sore so I was so thankful to have Michael there with me Michael was the only one in the delivery room with me by the way I said that my mom was in there before that but she ended up leaving um, and just waiting in the waiting room so, I was so thankful to have him there with me because I couldn't get up and change her diaper or, you know, do anything like that. I had to stay in the bed because I was so sore and it was so hard to walk. So, um, he helped with that a lot. She got her, you know, vaccines or shots, whatever that they had to do there. The next day, they just checked on us throughout the day and... We were home 24 hours after she was born, which they have to do her PKU test at the 24 hour mark. So at five o'clock they did her PKU test. They prick her heel and then they put the drops of blood onto this thing and then it goes to be tested for some metabolic something, I, or I don't know. Um, which I'll never get the results back for that. But, so they have to do that at 24 hours old and then after that, they went ahead and released us because everything was good, and we got to go home. Now, I am six days postpartum. I am down almost 15 pounds, um, and she is breastfeeding like a champ, but she is cluster feeding like crazy. So, she's been sleeping really well at night, except for last night. She was up. I mean for like four or five hours straight just eating but I know that's really common in the first couple of weeks and when they hit growth spurs and stuff so but she's eating really well and she is perfectly healthy and amazing and I honestly could not have asked for a better labor and delivery being six days postpartum I'm still really sore um, so it's hard for me to get up out of the bed and off the couch and just you know walk around for a long time they did give me pain meds but they gave me a strong set of pain meds that I'm I'm just not my body's not good with pain meds so I haven't been taking that and they gave me a lower dose of like basically like an ibuprofen but 
Um, so I, I've been taking that, but it's still, you know, I'm still pretty sore. So I did take a hot bath in Epsom salt today, and it was amazing. I just got to relax and soak in it, and they said to do that to help with the soreness, and, you know, and the stitches should dissolve in the next couple of weeks, so I'm excited about that, but she's waking up, but that is my labor and delivery story, and it was beautiful and the most amazing experience I've ever had, and now I have her and she is absolutely perfect. I'm trying not to show my boob in that. <laughs> She's absolutely perfect and so healthy. And I'm so, so grateful and just amazed at, at how everything went. Being my first pregnancy. And my, my whole pregnancy was just absolutely amazing. And, and I couldn't have asked for anything better. So thanks for watching.